Good morning, everybody. This is the live market open for December 28th, 2016. Last time I say 2016, it's our last show for the year. I'm Yochal, I'm a Forex Crunch and Market Movers podcast, doing the show as usual for FX to read. Today, we'll cover recent developments in markets, charts and levels, and our main theme of today is a look into 2017, a few predictions, a few trends, and then, of course, we'll wrap it up with the week ahead. Next week, first week of 2017 is already much more interesting than this week, and we'll wrap up the show as usual. If you have any questions, of course, they're more than welcome. If you cannot see the chat box alongside the screen, please go to the address here, tlk.io slash fxreet hyphen forex hyphen live hyphen video. <clears throat> Okay, what's going on in markets? Not too much. It's the holiday week. We're in the week between uh, Christmas and New Year's. So it's quiet trading in markets. People are talking about, well, George Michael that died over the weekend. Um, well, Carrie Fisher and many other celebrity deaths. Uh, there was a, a crash of a Russian plane. And anything not really market related, okay? So there hasn't been anything... To move markets, Donald Trump has not been tweeting anything market related. Um, in these kind of periods, we usually see some kind of last minute adjustments, end of year adjustments, such as um, uh, for portfolio managers, uh, but probably they already did everything in advance. Uh, will we see something on Friday just before the year end? ends? Maybe, but I'm not that sure. We did get some data since our last show, worth uh, certainly worth mentioning. It might have a bigger impact uh, when trading volume uh, returns in uh, the next week. So mostly good news from the United States. Final GDP, we covered that live here, um, came out at 3.5% in the third quarter, certainly bounced from the previous three quarters. That's the final read, um, better than expected. Also durable goods orders, came out better than expected with 0.5 and the core figure and other uh, figures, X Defense, X Air, or the headline figures, um, they all came out a bit better than expected. Um, in the housing sector of the United States, existing home sales also provided some support for the dollar, more or less as expected, uh, 5.61 and new home sales with 592,000. Uh, some disappointment from the core PCE the Fed's favorite inflation measure, uh, it dropped to 1.6 instead of 1.7, but the consumer confidence figure released yesterday, I don't have it printed here, but it jumped to 113, so much better than expected. Okay, so all in all, good data from the United States, little impact on the dollar, but this could feed into further dollar strength. It goes with the trend early in 2017. More data from other places. Uh, in the UK, we also had an upgrade of GDP. Remember, it's the quarter after Brexit, after the EU referendum, I should say, more correctly. So it was upgraded to 0.6. On the other hand, Canada, GDP there missed with a drop of 0.3 in uh, the month of October. Uh, and mixed data elsewhere from Canada. New Zealand looks much better with GDP rising 1.1. Uh, if we move to Japan, where they have no Christmas holiday, then core um, CPI did slide to, uh, well, 0.2 year over year. That's the Bank of Japan's measure. Remember, we have lots of measures of inflation in Japan, but the one that matters for the Bank of Japan is the one that is produced from the Bank of Japan. Okay, that's our uh, introductory, that's our introduction. Um, let's talk, well, let's jump to more events coming up this week, uh, very few, and then uh, do our segment about the technical levels, about the charts. So today, very, well, second or third year figures, UK mortgage approvals at half past nine after the show, and then pending home sales from the United States, probably the least important housing sector uh, figure at three GMT. Tomorrow, perhaps uh, a bit busier with the Eurozone money supply and loans, also not that important, but these are measures uh, that are monitored by the European Central Bank. As usual, jobless claims, like every week, last week they disappointed a bit, and crude oil inventories, this time on Thursday, this time at 4 GMT. And Friday, <clears throat> as everybody prepares for the newer celebrations, we have the Spanish CPI and the US Chicago PMI. All in all, as you can see, second and third tier figures in this holiday week. Okay, so now, as to our segment, let's talk about the charts beginning from major pairs. 
So here's Euro dollar. Here's our close look. Uh, 104.60. If we look at the hourly chart, we see lots of movements. But if we, well, we zoom out just a bit where we can see that in the past few days, we didn't have too much. I still see the 104.60 level as um, some kind of resistance, even though uh, the pair went just above it. So slight dollar weakness this morning, but it doesn't last too long. All in all, you can see uh, Euro dollar is up three pips on the day. Uh, further resistance 105.20 and then followed by 106.60. On the downside, I think we can uh, talk about this level 103.50. It was the lowest in 14 years, seen last week. Uh, an extension of previous falls ignited. The last move was by the Fed. Below 103.60, we're already back at levels last seen in 2002. That is 101.50. And then we can talk about euro dollar parity okay so these are the levels 105 20 104 60 103 60 uh, sorry 50 and then um levels last seen 14 15 years ago pound dollar uh, did fall just before uh christmas so it, it did hold up quite nicely to the 10 uh, 123 line but then we fell under this line and the pair is unable to recover so cable now sees resistance at 10 123 uh, as a round level, uh, further above 123.80 and 125.40. But if we look to the downside, and there are reasons for the pound to fall, we'll talk about that in the um, in the 2017 preview. That's 121.70 and 121 to the downside for cable. Let's move to dollar yen. Currently 127.50. Also here you can see trading has slowed down. So the round 118 line is a resistance, followed by uh, 118.80, uh, further above, and then, of course, the round level of 120. Looking down, we still have the 116 level. It used to be a line in the sand for the Bank of Japan. Worked there was a resistance in mid-December, further below 114.70. Okay, let's move to commodity currencies in our review here. So we're seeing the Canadian dollar we can currently 135.70, uh, very getting close to resistance there at 135.90. Further resistance is a line seen back in uh, November. That's, um, oh, sorry, that's 135.90. Uh, support here at 135.60, very close by. The pair in general is moving higher, lower oil prices and the strength of the US dollar. Looking uh, down 134.70, 133.80, and further below 131, the pair made a long ride. Well, it's thanks to the Federal Reserve, mostly. Also, oil prices have gone up, but not too far. Moving to the Australian dollar, also here we had a fall. The uh, commodity currencies in general, they fell as a late reaction to uh, the Fed, cont contrary to the euro and the yen, which were the first to react. So we have this line of support here, Aussie dollar 71.75 further below 71.40. Looking up, we have 72.50 and 73.10. These are the lines for Aussie dollar. Kiwi dollar under the 70 level, currently 69.25. Um, to the top side, we do have just before the 70 line, I would mention 69.70, further above 71 and 71.40, support at 68.80 and at 68.80. 20. Okay, so these are the lines. Uh, last but not least, let's mention dollar Swiss. I don't really like the Swiss franc due to the intervention, ongoing intervention by the Swiss National Bank. But anyway, currently 102.76, further above 103.30 and 104 to the downside. Uh, this is a bit out of date, but this is a better line. 102.20 and 102, further uh, below 101.50. Okay, so these are the lines for the major pairs for the last week of 2016. Now let's talk about the crosses. Beginning from Euro Swiss, uh, currently 107.50. Is the Swiss National Bank pushing Euro Swiss a bit higher uh, in this quiet period? You never know. They never tell us directly. 107.60 uh, is fierce resistance. Basically, the Swiss National Bank wants to see the pair be in the range between 108 to 110. This is more comfortable for them. Uh, 107.10 and 
180 are lines of support. I would say 180, uh, sorry, 108 is ne the next line of resistance. Euro pound, much more interesting. Currently at 85.20, um, 85 works there as support, followed by 84.50, 84.20, and further below 83.40. Looking up, we have um, 85.80, and then um, 87.80 and 88.80, okay? This pair had a wild ride. Currently, we're in quiet days in the holiday period, but this is certainly an interesting cross. Euro, yen, Euro, yen, currently 122.90, almost there. Uh, resistance, 123.70, followed by 124.40. To the downside, we have 122.40 and 121.60. Okay, and pound yen, one of the more exciting crosses more exciting currency pairs currently 144 uh, 30 and it's gone a long way from the depth there of 124 i think was the low for the year um 146 50 is resistance followed by 148 50 support at 143 and then 141 70 and 140. so currently in a tight range this will not last too long to complete our crosses, we also talk about WTI crude oil. So currently it's trading in the higher end of the uh, post OPEC range. Resistance there at 54.50. That's basically the high of the year. Uh, and support at 51.70, 51.80, which has been a strong resistance throughout 2016 before OPEC's decision. Further below, we have 49, 46.50 and 44.50. If we break above 5450, uh, basically the next line is only the round number of um, uh, $60 per barrel on West Texas Intermediate. Okay, so this completes our roundup of crosses. So we talked about all the technical uh, levels in this holiday week. Remember, trading is relatively slow, no big news, uh, no, no liquidity, lack of interest but everything will change next week the first week of 2017. so this is our preview for the first half at least of 2017 it's hard to make predictions but uh next year is just around the corner and there are certainly are some trends worth talking about so i think this will be a year um in which we'll see uh, more politics, making headlines, making moves, and less uh, central banks, okay? So up to um, 2015, I would say, I mean, roughly speaking, central banks were the only game in town. Uh, Mario Draghi, the head of the European Central Bank, and also other central bankers complained that governments need to do more. In 2016, we didn't see governments doing more, but we've seen central banks... Uh, sharing the impact on markets with huge political events, uh, the Brexit vote in June and the US elections, which brought Trump in November. My prediction, I think I'm not the only one here, is that politics will lead in 2017 and monetary policy will follow. Politics, it's not only elections, but also fiscal policy and also central bank appointments. But in general, um, politics, everything related to government decisions, uh, or elections will lead. Okay, um, before we move on, I see here a question. Um, uh, as far good morning, you mentioned that uh, pound yen uh, won't stay in a range for too long. Which way do you suggest it's going to break? Um, I think it'll break to the downside because of pound weakness uh, during 2017. We'll talk about the pound during this uh, 2017 preview. Okay, um, I'll I'm sure I'll give you a fuller answer in a few more minutes. Uh, let's continue. So we're talking about a transition to politics. Let's begin now with the United States of America. Uh, US dollar is the king. So here's Donald Trump. He'll be inaugurated as president of the United States on January 20th. It's actually only in three weeks. He made huge and contradictory, contra contradictory <laughs> election promises throughout the campaign. What's important for markets is how much fiscal stimulus will he provide. 
he'll probably judge on the actions in day one and 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 then throughout the first hundred days. Hundred days from late January is uh, late April, um, and markets expect fiscal stimulus, but fear trade decisions. So, um, what regarding uh, fiscal stimulus? Uh, Donald Trump talked about uh, spending more on the military, not cutting Medicare and Medicaid, um, cutting taxes, the income taxes and corporate taxes, and maintaining a low deficit how are you how is he going to do all that together i mean you're going to spend so much money and where's where's the money going to come from he talked about money coming from a huge growth and um, all the economists well the ones that are willing on his side as well see this is too far out so we expect something uh, to be a bit more moderate on the trade front he promised to, uh, he said China and Mexico are killing us. He wanted to bring more uh, the manufacturing jobs back to America. He won't really be able to do that because some of these jobs are lost to automation, to rob robots. And uh, also on the trade front, of course, there's lots of fear that he'll destroy global trade. Uh, so these are the fear, I mean, hope for lots of fiscal stimulus that will ignite the economy. On the other hand, we have uh, fears of trade, okay? Um, so, I think we'll have some kind of a disappointment from Donald Trump. Uh, it's, it's not that uh, he will not do anything, it's not that he'll do only damage, uh, but there will be only some tax cuts for corporations and for individuals, only limited infrastructure spending, so maybe New York will get a revamp of only one airport, not all three, just an example. Uh, more military spending, I will probably see that, uh, but, and hopefully, no real trade wars. Promises to break up NAFTA, or uh, we'll probably, we won't see that. Perhaps no signing of the TPP, um, which already, uh, he promised also after winning the elections, okay? So, I think we'll have a dis some kind of disappointment, but he will do some of the things he talked about. Now, what about the Fed? Uh, the <clears throat> central banks uh, still have a big impact. So, the first red rate hike is expected in June. It'll be enough time for the Fed to judge the economy, the strength of the US dollar, and um, what Trump actually does. The Fed says, always it's data dependent, and it's not only dependent on the data, but also on what uh, uh, Trump does, how Trump moves the economy with fiscal decisions. It's important to remember that uh, Yellen, Janet Yellen, pictured here, the chair of the Federal Reserve, ends her tenure in February 2018. It uh, seems like a long time from now because we're still in 2016, but in terms of central banking, it's not such a long time from now. Uh, we will probably hear about the next Fed chair. I mean, uh, Trump promised to replace her uh, towards the second half of the year, probably in the summer. In addition, there are two... Uh, Board, mem uh, board vacancies, so Trump can also nominate two other Fed members, so the Fed perhaps could be more hawkish. There's always a chance that uh, Trump will extend Yellen's tenure for another four years, okay? But uh, we, we don't know. Currently, we expect her to end her job in, uh, in a year, and speculation about the next Fed chair will begin uh, in the summer. Okay, so there will be uncertainty about that, and the Fed chair can be hawkish, can, he or she can be dovish, we don't really know. Uh, so what, what do I think about the US dollar in 2017? I see it resuming the rally early in the year on expectations for fiscal stimulus from Trump and the consequent uh, rate hikes from the Federal Reserve. Uh, a stronger dollar, though, could be also um, negative for the US dollar eventually, why? Uh, I mean, the pendulum can swing back because a stronger dollar makes inflation, pushes inflation lower. It could dampen the pace of hikes, dampen inflation, dampen exports, and swing the pendulum back. So a stronger dollar depresses inflation. So I see at the beginning of the year, in January, high hopes for Trump, extension of the trend seen in 2016. Uh, but after April, or perhaps even before that, there is room for the dollar to fall. If it, especially if it goes uh, too far, okay? Their expectations are just too high from the US economy and from the Federal Reserve due to 
uh, Trump, okay? Um, so that's about the US dollar. Now let's talk about Europe. I'm sitting here in Barcelona in the capital of the northeastern region of Catalonia in Spain. Uh, also here we'll have some action. Before that, in February, we have we might have elections in Italy. Lots of uncertainty about the uh, Eurozone's third largest economy. Okay, uh, remember we had a referendum back in the early, well, just this month in early December and Prime Minister Matteo Renzi uh, resigned. We have another Prime Minister, Gentolini, I think his name is, and we're not sure if he's gonna stay or if there are gonna be elections. Uh, that's, we, lots of uncertainty about that. Smaller country in March, we have elections in the Netherlands. You have to watch out there for Gert Wilders, um, the leader of the far-right party. Uh, it'll be sort of a telling sign about um, things to come. If he succeeds, well, he's not expected to be prime minister, but he might uh, enlarge his uh, take in the, gov in the parliament, and this could have an impact on other countries as well. We'll probably have sort of a mainstream government in the Netherlands. The most important country is France. France is the second largest economy. Uh, there we have a first round of elections, of presidential elections on April 27th. Sorry, I think it's 23rd. Sorry for that mistake. April 23rd. And um, then the second round runoff between probably Francois Fillon, center-right uh, candidate, the same party like Nicolas Sarkozy, a mainstream against probably Marine Le Pen, the extreme right, which has growing chances of becoming president. Currently, uh, opinion polls show a big lead for Fionn because uh, left-wing voters will probably vote for Fionn against the far right. But you never, never know about the turnout, about what happens there. That's a real worry, okay? Uh, in September, maybe a referendum for independence here in Catalonia, and in October, elections in Germany. The scariest scenario for Europe is this lady, uh, President Marine Le Pen, head of the National Front in um, in France. Uh, she vowed to leave the Eurozone. She said, call me Mrs. Frexit. Okay, Frexit for France, exit of the Eurozone. Clearly, there is no Euro without France. Um, she doesn't have to really follow her promises if she's elected. Things will begin breaking up uh, on their own. Anyway, it's a very, very scary scenario. Again, uh, her opponent, main opponent, as it seems at the moment, Francois Fillon has better chances. So if she wins, it's really devastating for the Euro. Uh, again, higher chances for her rival. If he wins, Francois Fillon, maybe we'll begin seeing uh, headlines like peak populism. Things might begin getting uh, better, more mainstream, more stable, more market friendly. Okay. Elsewhere, uh, this will impact the ECB, but the ECB, European Central Bank, already basically laid out its plans for 2017. So at least in the first half of the year, they don't need to announce anything. I believe they'll be, they won't change policy until September. Um, so uh, governments will probably do more because it's an election year and uh, finally doing what Draghi told them to do, maybe a bit more fiscal stimulus, hopefully. Uh, Draghi is still important, the ECB is still important, but certainly not alone. So we don't expect any big changes from the ECB uh, early in the year at least. Uh, they'll be perhaps reacting to other uh, to governments but not uh, working on their own. So my prediction for euro dollar, I think we have a window, an open window for parity in January. Um, currently we're at 10460 more or less. So I think with a stronger dollar worries about elections in the eurozone, we could have a big move in January. It could be a false break. We might see euro dollar fall to uh, below parity, maybe to 98, uh, but then uh, assuming we have more, no disaster from Trump, uh, and um, we have, um, of course, uh, no uh, disaster in the French elections, we could see the euro begin rising in May. It depends on Fillon, it depends on Trump. Okay. Now, I guess I'll answer the question about removing to the UK, the question about pound yen. So Brexit, that's the, another big event of 2016. So Article 50 will be triggered in March. The government promised that 
it'll either be decided uh, by parliament or decided by uh, well the government it doesn't really matter um, and negotiations will officially begin um, the Europeans will probably be very tough with the UK for several reasons okay the reasons are uh, that they will want uh, to show other countries that think of leaving that leaving the European Union carries with it some kind of punishment they want to deter other countries from doing that in addition um, they don't like they don't want to give uh, Britain any kind of a good deal they want to maintain unity and the third reason we have elections okay uh, we have elections in the eurozone so it's another reason uh, I mean in France and Germany in the Netherlands and Italy they want, will want to keep things relatively stable okay uh, regarding the negotiations Currently, there is high uncertainty about what they'll entail if we'll have more uh, uh, what's called a soft Brexit. Soft Brexit means access to the single market, more free trade, and probably more immigration. Basically, uh, the Norwegian model uh, officially being out of the European Union for the UK, but enjoying and, and also contributing, to basically being in. Uh, or a hard Brexit, uh, which means uh, less immigration, which some want, and also less access to the single market, which is bad for the economy. Uh, the hard Brexit talk so far from the government is probably only a negotiation tactic, but you don't really know. Uh, this lady, Theresa May, uh, Prime Minister of the, uh, Britain, uh, we don't really know what she fully, fully wants um we will learn that throughout 2017. Uh, the bank of england here is mark carney running a marathon um currently the stance of the bank of england is to stay neutral for a while uh, if they cut rates it could push inflation higher the huge fall of the pound in 2016 hurt uh well hurt uk consumers a lot of products are imported or a lot of british products rely on imports from other countries and cutting rates too much to help the economy could push inflation too high but also higher rates uh, could hurt the economy because they will dampen demand okay so basically uh mark carney here in the bank of england are between the rock and the hard place um fear of stag stagflation inflation without growth is quite worrying Okay, so not such, I'm not really optimistic for the UK. Um, so Brexit, I think, will begin biting so far, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, Q3 GDP was actually great, was actually 0.6%. Brexit will probably begin biting in 2017. Uncertainty about what kind of Brexit will have, uh, will hurt uh, investment. Okay, and jobless claims, the claimant count change, that's already rising. So maybe employment, which is in a very good situation at the moment, is probably uh, peaked. So unemployment could begin rising, um, if only because it, uh, well, just a change of trend. And Article 15, just the triggering of it, could bring a new wave of worry. We know Article 50 is coming. The referendum was held six months ago, a very long time ago. But um, the actual move... Uh, the actual official announcement that the UK is leaving the European Union could uh, still bring a new wave of worry. So, uh, pound dollar, my prediction, it has room to the downside. I would say that 115 on pound dollar is not too low, okay? Uh, that we've seen these levels for well, a minute or two in the flash crash in October, and I think it's possible to see that once again. It could tick up when the dollar falls. I mean, if we have a disappointment from the Donald, then we could see it uh, move up, but I don't see it rising above 130. So uh, I, um, what I foresee for pound dollar is mostly uh, negative, okay? Uh, or negative mostly for the pound, negative for the pound against the dollar, against the yen, against the euro, okay? So that's why I see the pound falling. Moving to Japan, I see Japan uh, as more stable in uh, 2017. We could see a big range in, in dollar-yen, but in general, Japan is much more comfortable with the current level of dollar-yen, uh, currently at 117, uh, 118. So these are 
comfortable levels of inflation can move a bit higher. Uh, Japan is competitive. And it's important to, to mention that Japan is competitive not only with the United States, but also with China, the first and second largest uh, uh, well, economies in the world. And that's good news. Uh, the Bank of Japan recently announced new policy back in September. Um, so at least in the first half of the year of 2017, I don't expect any new announcements. So basically their policy is to target um, is to target 10-year uh, yields, long-term yields, to keep them around zero. Uh, so they're talking about the target, not about the level of bond buying. And uh, they'll probably want to stay also out of the spotlight for some time. Politically, uh, Shinzo Abe, the picture here at the bottom, the man on the left, the prime minister, he has a firm grip, no opponents within his party, no opponents within the opposition, and a relatively stable economy. And we're talking about a lack of real growth in Japan, but the unemployment rate is low. And, well, uh, for everybody, anybody that's been to Japan has seen what great country it is. Um, so Shinzo Abe has a firm grip on power. Uh, geopolitics could become a worry, though. So we don't know what Donald Trump intends to do regarding um, the well, military umbrella that the United States provides to Japan and to South Korea. Uh, so that could be a worry. Uh, China is expanding in the South China Sea. Um, so that's a known unknown, okay? Um, and my range, it could be wild, okay? But I don't think we'll have a specific trend. So I see the pair moving uh, within a wide range, but around current levels, that means 110 to 125. Let's move now a bit more quickly to other economies, the Canadian uh, commodity currencies, starting with Canada. I see a big fall coming in the Canadian dollar uh, because oil prices have limited room to the upside. With every cut from OPEC, we have a rise in production from the United States. That's oil, Canadian oil. Tar sands here pictured in the bottom are expensive. Okay, I mean, production from the Canadian, Canadian tar sands is quite expensive. Uh, real estate prices in Vancouver and also Toronto and perhaps Montreal are a bit of a worry. The economy is still in transition from the oil uh, boom um, and demand from the United States could be limited. Again, I don't expect Donald Trump to provide uh, enough stimulus. Okay, so the Canada is dependent on two main things, oil prices and demand from its big southern neighbor. And <clears throat> this could be limited um, so basically, I think there are many factors playing against the Canadian economy, at least in 2017. So for 2017, the Bank of Canada, that's the governor here, Pelos, uh, they have an open door for rate cuts. First of all, their stance is a bit dovish. Um, I think that, uh, well, they talked about uh, an interest rate of minus 0 0.50 as the lower limit. Currently, the interest rate in Canada is plus 0 0.50, so I think we could see rate cuts, maybe not below zero, but uh, I wouldn't rule out any rate cuts. A weaker Canadian dollar has helped the economy in the past, um, and they might want to see that again. I mean, fall maybe some weakness in uh, 2017, and this will support a strong recovery perhaps in 2018 and 19. So 147, which was the peak, Early in the year, I think it's realistic for a dollar can. Seems a bit far out, but I wouldn't rule that out. So I'm bearish on the Canadian dollar or bullish on dollar can for uh, 2017. I see more stability in other commodity currencies. Let's talk about getting this with the Australian dollar. They have a better transition from the mining boom, from uh, reliance on China. And we're also seeing a softer landing from China. Um, so their commodity is iron ore. Um, uh, copper have a slightly brighter future than oil. So uh, I think the Australian dollar has room to the downside, but it's mostly dependent on uh, the US dollar on Donald Trump. Australia could lose its AAA rating, okay, my, with due to some deficit spending, but we've seen that these rating agencies have uh, lower impact. I mean, there'll be, there'll be huge headlines about uh, these it's rating, but I think the economy will continue smoothly. We might see a wider range 
than in 2016, which was a bit boring for the Australian dollar. So between 0 0.6, between 63 to 80 cents there, but without too many swings, relatively stable uh, Australian dollar. Moving to New Zealand, here's a nice picture from New Zealand. They have a super strong economy. We've seen the growth rate moving up. Um, prices in uh, Auckland and other places are still rising. Uh, it's not only milk, super stable government. Um, I mean, we had a change of prime minister now, but that was done uh, very nicely. Milk prices that have gone up in the latter part of 2016 could slide, but the economy is certainly resilient. The RBNZ, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, would prefer a weaker currency, uh, but I'm not sure they'll get it. Maybe we'll see Australian, the Australian dollar and the Kiwi dollar at parity. Regarding the Kiwi dollar against the US dollar, I see it in range between 65 and 75. Uh, basically stable, relatively strong, perhaps sliding a bit more, but only because of the strength of the US dollar, nothing New Zealand related. So I'm bullish on the Kiwi in general. Maybe not at the beginning of the year against the greenback, but later on for sure. And let's talk about another beautiful country, Switzerland. Still attracts safe haven flows, okay? Um, a Swiss National Bank still intervenes to weaken the currency. But if we do have lots of fiscal stimulus from Donald Trump, if we do have uh, more, a move to mainstream with Francois Fillon and higher oil prices, we could see the Swiss National Bank relax its interventions uh, if inflation rises worldwide. Again, this is not a currency like, not a currency I like talking about too much because they intervene, they make trading much more complicated. But perhaps after uh, they announced their peg back in September 2011, removed it abruptly in uh, January 2015, so it's now almost two years since the, the big S and bomb, Maybe, and, but they still intervene in markets, they might begin removing it uh, shortly. Okay. So to conclude our 2017 preview, level of uncertainty is high. I think uh, that's quite clear. A lot depends on Donald Trump. I've mentioned him not only uh, when I talked about the United States, but also even about New Zealand, for example. Um, politics in Europe, uh, Brexit included, are very important. France, Brexit negotiations, then Germany, of course, other places, including here in Catalonia. And we might also have some no, unknown unknowns, okay? We might have the things flaring up in the Middle East, hopefully not. Uh, anything between India and Pakistan, uh, China, which seems stable at the moment, but you don't know what's going to happen there with the convention, with the uh, five-year meeting there in uh, October. Um, yeah, oil prices, remember the OPEC deal is due to last only six months. Okay, oil prices have been relatively stable. We don't know about that. I mean, we can talk about for hours and hours about anything else that can happen in markets. We don't really know. As I said at the beginning, uh, 2017 preview, but mostly for the first half, which is easier to see than, uh, than the second half. Okay, so lots of uncertainty going through. Again, I think stronger dollar at the beginning, weakening afterwards, but... Um, Stay alert, stay strongly vigilant, as Trichet used to say, and it's going to be an interesting year. That's the only certain thing. Okay. And now let's preview the first week of January 2017, beginning January 2nd, ending January 6th. So on Monday, some traders are still going to have a hangover from the New Year parties, and we also have the Keishin Manufacturing PMI. Monday, January 2nd is a holiday in some countries, so trading will still be probably a bit slow. And Tuesday, we're back to full business. January 3rd, we have German CPI. Uh, uh, let's see if inflation begins rising in the Eurozone. For those trading the Kiwi, let's see if milk prices continue moving to the upside. And we have the first hint for the ISM manufacturing PMI. Uh, for the non from payrolls, that's the ISM manufacturing PMI. So we begin the build-up for the NFP. Wednesday is a busy day. Uh, we have uh, purchasing, well, PMIs in the uh, 
uh, in the Eurozone and also inflation figures, if I'm not mistaken. Oil inventories, as usual, and the Fed meeting minutes. These are the minutes from the uh, meeting in December in which they decided to raise rates and also um, make it a hawkish hike, okay, when they uh, upgraded the dot plot to three hikes in 2017. Uh, I think we'll have only two hikes. Again, Donald dependent. Thursday, a busy day because we have, well, in the UK, uh, the last of three PMIs, the services PMI, and big hints towards the NFP. We have the ADP non from payrolls and the ISM non-manufacturing PMI, the survey for the services sector, okay? And of course, on Friday, non from payrolls that will conclude uh, the job uh, gains for 2016. Again, we'll have revisions afterwards, but we'll have sort of a full picture of of 2016. Uh, let's see if wages continue rising and of course uh, jobs themselves and the Canadian jobs report as well. So it's going to be messy for dollar CAD. Anyway, first week of 20, um, uh, 2017 will be very, very busy, quite different uh, from this week. All right. So let's let's wrap up the show. The last show of 2016, live market open for December 28th. It's almost 2017. Markets are very slow this week, quite trading in the holiday week. People are talking about celebrity deaths and other news which are not uh, not market moving. Um, in these kind of periods, end of uh, month, end of quarter, end of year, we see usually see some kind of portfolio adjustments that make uh, significant moves in currencies. But so far, this isn't the case. But if you are trading on Friday, uh, watch out for last minute jitters, OK? Uh, we might see them. So far, it doesn't seem so. It seems that moves have been smoothed out um, beforehand. OK, recent data has been mostly positive for the uh, United States. We haven't seen any impact on currencies, but we might see that uh, next week. So the main things that stand out are GDP that was upgraded better than expected to 3.5, investment seen in durable goods orders, uh, housing figures. Inflation has been a bit weak, but uh, that isn't too shabby, especially when consumer confidence is high. Okay, so if we move a bit to the charts in our wrap up this morning, we can see that uh, euro dollar uh, a bit under 104.60. When we began the show, it was a bit up on the day. Now it's a bit down. Nothing significant. Above 104.60, 105.20. Below 103.60. Hardly any movement this week. Pound dollar was hit just before Christmas. 123 is resistance. 120, 1.70 support. Dollar yen under 118. Between 116 and 118. Dollar CAD here at 135.74, 135.90 is resistance. Uh, Aussie dollar uh, between 71.75 and 72.50, and the Kiwi dollar under the 70 line finding support at 68.80. Okay, uh, in the show today we covered, and we we covered we did a long preview for 2017 at least the first half. So if you're watching only this wrap up, please check out the full preview. Um, it's going to be a very interesting year. Um, that's it for today. Uh, thank you everybody for coming, uh, coming today and coming throughout 2016. I'm going to be here next week, same time in 2017. It's going to be uh, uh, interesting. Let's see if we have we already have movements uh, before the show next week. Um, that's it. So I wish everybody happy new year. Um, enjoy your uh, happy well new year parties. Enjoy. You can think about all the good things that happened in 2016, not only disasters. And uh, have a great 2017. See you next week. So that's it. Uh, have a great uh, week weekend, and see you next week. Ciao. Bye bye.